Welcome back, everybody. Let's take a look at Ariel by Sylvia Plath. Probably on your first encounter with this poem, you're like, whoo, whoo. you know, I can remember when I first encountered this poem, I was like, wow, this, this is really, really dense. This is, this is really, really difficult. We need to get in here and pull it apart. And I'd like to share a, a little technique with that, and that's to limit what you can see at one time. So I have some thick cardstock paper here, so we can just kind of focus, and we'll just kind of go along, and I'll move the, the cardstock paper as we uncover this poem. Let's start with the, the title always. What Ariel that is a spirit from Shakespeare's play, The Tempest. And it's gonna, later in the poem, it's gonna be, take the form of a horse. So the poem opens up with the sentence stasis, and darkness. What do we see here? Stasis means something is static, it's not moving, and in darkness. Ooh, that's that's a strong image of just a void, just nothingness. No movement, no light, nothingness. Then suddenly, bang, right? What a shift. So what I did, I drew a line in red because it's that's such a difference as we move from one to the other, then bang, the substances, substanceless blue pour of tor and distances. So now all of a sudden we encounter vastness. We have color. Tor is a mountain, right? And it, so, but there's nothing else here. We have this idea of being isolated. Now, God's Linus, that's, that's Plath, that's, that's her. How one we grow, pivot of heels and knees. So we have this, the speaker identifying herself as God's Linus, and we have growth, we have breaking free, pivot of heels. Yeah, women wear heels and knees. We have the furrow. So we have a new opening here. This idea of movement. We're moving here, right? But yet, I cannot catch. It's this, we're it's this wanting. We're not there. We're reaching and we're reaching. Then we encounter these mysterious dark berries. So this new world that we're moving into, the, the speaker has not encountered before. And eating these dark, mysterious berries, black, sweet blood mouthfuls moving into darkness, shadows. Then all of a sudden, something else, and that something else is Ariel. Something else, right, grabs Plath. And now we have release, a sense of exhilaration, right? Thighs, hair, flakes from my heels. It's almost this, this idea that we're seeing here of being released from gender, that you can Tell that the Plath is not happy with the, the roles of gender. And we have this idea of release and rebirth. White Godiva, Lady Godiva, I unpeel, dead hands, dead stringencies. We're going to see some rebirth now, right? We go from death to a child, the child's cry. Glitter of seas, water is always fertility, right? Melts in the wall, and I 
am the arrow, the dew that flies suicidal at one with the drive and to the red eye, the cauldron of morning. Now, look, let's compare to where we are here at the end of the poem to where we were at the beginning of the poem, right? Not moving. That sense of just void, despair. Now look at all the movement we have here, all of the release, right? But at the same time, kind of a, a cautionary, right? It's almost like the speaker knows what the, what the cost is for breaking away from constraints. And look what it took. It took this mysterious force, this spirit, right, to reach and grab her and carry her to this new place of release and rebirth. Wow. This poem is, is really, really just, I mean, it's really tight. And it's, oh, so it's like when you'd start to rip it apart, you really get the sense of release and power with it. So as always... Until we get to be together again, be well, do good work, and keep in touch.